which also means this has to come off this bracket for the hydraulic lines. You are now watching Farming with Duffy Ag. Previously, 7520 got a working quick hitch. Yeah, pretty excited. Welcome back to the channel. Haven't done much tanker work in the last few episodes. Kind of at a dead end where I need to get some parts, need to make some time, get some hose, need to figure out what I need to do for hydraulics, what I want to do for hydraulics. So in the meantime, 60 degrees out. Yeah, let's work on the planner. Let's dive into that and I'll bring it over here and we got to narrow it up. So, yeah, still kicking myself for that, but we're going to make it work. It's going to work out. So, alrighty. Appreciate you guys watching, liking, subscribing, being part of the channel. Let's dive into today. So my plan was to back this in and open that planter up, but since it is nice and we can work on it and push it back to where it needs to go, needs to be over there out of the way, we're just going to do that. So my brother's got all these different attachments that actually go on here. So the forks, um, let me show you. All landscape stuff, bigger bucket. He's got a ball. I was hoping he had the receiver on there. I guess we're gonna have to grab a receiver. A rake, a uh, stump grinder. Yeah, pop. we'll pop this out and we'll grab a receiver so we can move that. Okay, those of you who are new to the channel, I picked up at the time on the online bid I, what we thought was an 8-row front fold, 30-inch um, row. Turns out it's a 36. So we got to do a little bit of modification on this. Nothing too crazy. Okay, it's a little bit crazy, but it's doable. So we got to move each one of these three inches over. And then we got to move from there six inches over granted this stuff is all you bolted on so it's the pivots and the transmission which is the big major pieces um and a little bit of this like we got to put that on the other side which puts us like three inches right here so nothing too crazy but that's where we're at and we're gonna start diving into that today the reason i want to go to 30 make it better for cultivating 30 inch row corn is better than 36 the old planter was like 32s and 38s and it annoyed me unbelievable yes i have a kemper head um but it doesn't line up for anything else so plus it's wider at 36 um i got a hell of a deal on this planter clearly but somebody had actually made this into what it is today this was a kit that somebody welded so i'm still gonna grab some gouge tips for the plasma cutter probably do that tomorrow gouge out those welds um once those welds are gouged out then yeah we're good so we'll get these hydraulic lines out of the way get the hydro or the electrical lines out of the way um yeah basically strip it down Yeah, this planter was 100% custom built. 
which is like it came off a straight frame. Somebody welded this onto it because these don't line up where they sh they're not symmetrical. And like these getting welded, that would not be a factory part, <laughs> a T that's welded to the frame. So yeah, 100%. So we'll move some things around. I marked it already. We gotta move this one. This is outside of this U-bolt. This is outside, so as you see, we're just gonna, on this one, we're just gonna have to cut that off and move that bracket, which also means we're gonna have to move that when we're done. This side, oh, and along with cut underneath this bracket um, to the U-bolt. Same with over here, we cut that. We're gonna have to notch the flex lock in the middle, which there's plenty of weld there anyways so we'll have to cut that out cut it across and then re-weld it just to the right but that will miss we won't have to cut this off um yeah got all the electrical stuff pulled off um so each one of these drive solenoids or what i'm not even sure what they're actually called disengagement solenoids because see you apply power and they they pull in um i believe that's how that works so there's four of those then you got all your seed tube um, sensors and then this actually has a uh, electric selector valve to run one marker arm of the other so you don't have to pick up the plant or drop it like the normal setup so that's pretty neat but well, pulled all that off because it all needs to be rewired it was either makeshift or the wires were um, shot so that's easy enough to do but got those off and then let's see had to do a little bit of readjustment my brother came he's gonna sneak by but got this unhooked two bolts off the bottom none of this makes any sense to me how they laid this out but that has its own remote going that goes to the marker marker arms and then you got your one remote that picks the planter up i guess there's only one remote because there's only another line that goes underneath. So, yeah. It's confusing to me. I'm not, somebody 100% built this because it's sweet. See, they got flow control valves on each cylinder so you can adjust them and lift them up accordingly. Mark, welcome back to radio. Back on the radio. Thank you for having me. So Mark, connect the dots for us. How this conflict halfway across the world affects your ability to run your dairy farm My father's here in on. Massachusetts. What is this? NP well, NPR? We're in the NPR world at Talk Radio. For dairy yeah. foods, and so price and supply and the ingredients that we need, the materials that we need in order to farm, are really based on the world. What's going on in the world? So whether it be fertilizer coming so from they got him on the Ukraine, talk radio today about talking how from, the world is um, other affecting everything else for farmers, especially in Massachusetts to our farms. And also, you know, we, we, we help feed the world. The United States actually exports a considerable amount of dairy products, about 15 to 20% of what we produce in a year. And so we are. All right, he got that gouged out. I was gonna grind it. There we go. So we have to take that off because we're gonna move everything over. So that is why that's coming off. Which also means this has to come off. This bracket for the hydraulic lines. It'd help if we grounded it, right?
I think I can get away with it being right up tight with it. So the lines right here that I marked, I think it's gonna touch right up to the weld. So we're gonna switch back to cutting and we'll cut this out. Which we might have to come back reinforce that. I think we'll be okay actually, but that way we can just loosen this and slide it right to where it needs to be and then check over here. I gotta get the grinder going. We'll clean up these edges. Open that back up. So we should have enough room there. This is cleaned up. Yeah. A little bit of gouge into the frame, but that's okay. We're still good. Didn't have to cut this, I don't think, but we'll loosen these. I did end up cutting the shaft because, well, as Frank pointed out, which I never even noticed, that was bent to hell. Like somebody had hooked to it and pulled on it. So that was all bent. So this one needed a shaft anyways. Um, they're all gonna have to get moved and redone and whatnot. But should be able to loosen this, slide it over, and then we'll measure off the center what exactly we got. Should just be able to loosen these and then slide it. Yeah, I'll just move some things over, we'll be good. Ended up cutting this back. We gotta go more. So we're, we gotta do it on the other side. Measuring across, trying to get everything square. Challenging, very challenging. Well, we started off and I was like, oh, that was easy, I moved everything over. Since then, that was like three hours ago. Since then, I've had to cut two U-bolts because I messed up the threads. I did end up notching that back. Once we get it lined up, then I'll re-weld all that. I think I got enough room. Based on how it's sitting right now, it's on 30. So middle two will be on 30. Problem is I can't get this back up and put that U-bolt in by myself. I thought about grabbing that. My brother ran to the store, he was coming back. Hopefully he's back and he can give me a hand picking this up. Once I lock that on, then it will be better. Then we can start working everything down. Um, these will have to pick up the bar, loosen them and move them. I think I gotta notch that off, that bracket that actually was welded on there, which is okay. But yeah, I thought we were doing good and then I started leveling things. So this is level and square right now. This one. This one is on the money, hopefully. This one we gotta get up and we'll level and square it out and see what we got for a gap. Threw it up on a block. Hopefully that gets us in. That one looks okay without wrecking any threads. I guess we'll see if we can do that or not. Okay. There we go. The block trick works, okay. Good to know. Still battle in the middle rows. So, 
they got to go out just a tiny little bit um granted because it is a flex planter in the middle based on how much it's flex one way or another it does pull them together or away so I'm trying to level everything out and that's that's being a pain and if i'm not good in the middle then everything out will be offset but i think just a tiny little bit push both out and then we'll be good we got it now let me show you middle to middle on the back 30 right in the middle and then i did measure opener to opener wheel 30 that took <laughs> that took quite a while like a way too much time but that sets us up pretty good i don't know I, it, it's tuesday so we might get out of here um but whew. so from here we got a move the wheel over um which has a connection point to the transmission somewhere in here i don't know oh it's just slides okay maybe we're okay i think maybe so we'll move that over that might close up um but we got to pick this up in order to move it over and we don't that just has to be between each one and then this one hopefully just slides over and then it will be good but i guess we'll see well it's getting dark which means it's 7 30 7 7 o'clock on the dot wild i love it i feel like you get so much more done even though today's been fighting me um so we're gonna come back and we're gonna weld in that just to brace this because there is some weight on it when it's folded up if you're road transporting and that's just used when you're in the field you pop that apart so it can flex in the middle so i got this apart um which really is the drive mechanic or the transmission lock so as it's going around that actually when you lower down it locks it in which is cool um which is good so it bolts right into there we're gonna have to modify that a little bit, but that means, um, no, that does not mean we're loose. Alrighty, because we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to modify this shaft coming across because then that goes into here, but that's a full length section in, in the middle of it. So, that, I was planning on getting to that, but the fact that we're gonna have to we're gonna have to do some uh, modifications on it. Cause then that engages and disengages. Um, yep. Cause it's bolted through this side, goes to the bearings, goes up to here. So honestly our best bet is, see they welded it here oh those welds are way worse than mine hold on let me get my phone out so you guys can compare because there's quite a few people that don't <laughs> look at that bubble gum welds upside down so that's gonna have to get cut off those are gonna have to get cut off because we're moving everything yeah so I guess we'll cut those off first that way it can all slide together and we're just gonna have to pick this up and go with it. But it's taco time. Hey, how much can your ditch witch lift? Give us some rundown of the specs. Uh, weighs like 3,500 pounds. It can pick up 1,062 pounds at 35% tip. And at 100% tip, I guess, is 3,000 pounds. And we've had it at 100% tip pretty much. So, it's a good machine, obviously, as you guys have seen. It's handy getting in and off of. So, kind of beats the skid, but price tag on it was pretty much the same as your average skid that came in at like almost 40 grand. So, they are expensive and you are standing on it out in the conditions, but it's obviously handy. Handy indeed. So. Alrighty. Well, I guess 
you'll have to stay tuned today fought me quite a bit um there wasn't more action i'm sure there's going to be plenty of good comments um in the section below about what to do better right wrong i think we're okay right now got to do some fabrication of stuff this that panel goes back on um the fold wings have to go back on and we're gonna have to fabricate some of the lower side of that but once we get it in so you can already see how much narrower it is so once we get that in the wings are going to be here i think the transport width is 10 foot makes life really nice um since we are gonna gouge out the welds on this kit this was a kit somebody keelman i think keelman's the kit um i'd have to look back in the comment so they built these kits and they somebody said we believe that's what it is so it's a kit to slide in so we're just going to narrow it down i'm going to move that transmission down which ain't too bad to do um it's just lining up shafts after but once we move it down we'll we'll probably we'll see how it lines up with the transmission but we'll probably take three inches out of this side and three inches out of that side which will then cut our six inch uh in between it and then when it folds up it will still be good that it will actually be folded on top of itself so these brackets will eventually go back on somewhere in here once we figure out where they are and they're just the lock brackets that will make life easy but alrighty we're gonna go get dinner appreciate you guys watching along like and subscribing yeah supporting me on my it would have been easier to find a 30 inch row corn planter if i had known it was a it was a 36 probably would not have been on it at all um but yeah there's plenty there's 30 inch row planters out there um they're just going to be more expensive than what i'll have into this when i'm done and they won't have some of the cool features that this has flex flex uh frame planter is pretty freaking sweet especially for around us we don't have we have some nice flat fields but we have a bunch that has hilling and as you see all the new planters that's the thing they want flex in it they want down pressure so you get seed, seed to soil contact yeah but, alrighty appreciate you guys watching I'll see you guys on the next one I'm just sitting here picking up stuff and I'm like we're taking more than three inches off of that because we're losing it all in the frame so when we get there we'll measure we'll see how much we got to take off yeah, somebody was going to catch me in the comments and say, hey, you need to do more than three inches. So.